Okay, um, let's go ahead and resume the examination. <coughs> Mr. Hall, I remind you, you're still under oath. Yes, ma'am. Waiting for you. Mr. Hall, yes. was there a time in late October, early November that you had occasion to go to Cal Psychiatric Services? Yes, there was. And did you yes. discuss treatment of the children with the Dr. Okay, Kalani? Can you start? You're going pretty fast. I'm going to take notes. Again, repeat the question. The, the re first question? Yeah. Was there a time in late October, early November 2018 that you had occasion to go to Cal Psychiatric Services. I've been to Cal Psychiatric Services six times in October. Okay. I'm sorry, what? I've been to Cal Psychiatric Services six times in October. How do you spell Cal? C-A-L. Did you have occasion to discuss the medical treatment of your uh, son, Emmanuel, with Dr. Kalati? With Dr. Kalati and with uh, the nurse practitioner at another occasion, talking about the medication, and uh, it, it, I've I've been there six times. Did you demand that they see service uh, providing services for your son? I'm sorry. Did you demand that they cease providing services for your son? No, I did not whatsoever. Did you demand that they see that they cease prescribing medication for your son? I did not. So if Dr. Kalati wrote a letter stating that that's what you said, he would be a liar, correct? He is lying if he wrote that letter. And not only that, but I reloaded a response, and you have it in your email. It was sent to him and to your email as well, I describing would, the entire event. I would ask you to turn to proposed exhibit 43. I got it. And that is a letter from Dr. Kalati dated November 14th, 2018. Is that correct? Uh, it is. And you received a copy of that letter? I did. And, and I that, responded to it. And is that an accurate copy of the letter that you were sent? Hold on. Let me get my copy. Stand by. I didn't hear the answer. I said, uh, hold on. Let me get my copy of the letter. Stand by. I believe it is an accurate copy, Your Honor. I would move for this letter's admission. Any objection, sir? Um, I would like the response to be admitted as well. Okay. Well, yeah. we can get to that. Okay. So you have read this letter, correct, sir? How about it? I have. Oh, I'm sorry. like it is the same. Okay. Mr. 
Oh, you read this letter? I have. And according to the letter, you you demanded that all treatments cease, correct? No, that is inaccurate. Oh. Whatever your rec your representations were, isn't it true that Dr. Kalade has now ceased providing medical services? According to this letter, he has. Recently um, approached by the plaintiff regarding a school field trip to California. Yes. Sunstorm. Yes. Did you have an open dialogue regarding this trip with no. the plaintiff? Describe open dialogue. Did you discuss the matter with the mother? Very briefly. Okay. And was that done by text message? Uh, it might have been. I'm not sure. I would ask you to turn to proposed exhibit 45 in the plaintiff's finding. Yeah. Is that in fact the, the discussion that you had with the plaintiff? Looks like it. Okay, and it continues on the next page. Is that an accurate representation of the conversation you had all I have then regarding the Storm's uh, field uh, trip? All I got is a text message from Laura Skylar. It's all I have is one page of a text message. You should be looking at PLA 162 and 163. You're one too far. Okay. We have exhibit 45. I'm not looking at it yet. I did it. Yeah, I see it. And is that an accurate representation of the conversation you had with the plaintiff regarding Storm's field trip? I think so. Okay. Move for its admission. Any objections? No. Okay, then we're going to look at it. Mr. Burke, did you uh, agree to allow your son to go on a school field trip to Pali Institute? No. And what was your reason for denying that? Um, several reasons. Number one, mom's severe mental health issues. Number two was her refusal to obey court orders when it comes to the custody of the children. Uh, one time she took the kids for almost four months. Another time just recently, when you were on board, she took the kids for a month. Just recently, she would not allow me to have the children for Christmas, and on and on and on. Her refute, and I'm not finished. Her refusal to 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 deal with the medication properly. She's unsafe with the medication. The kids are showing um, signs of uh, of all the major signs of the medication uh, as overdosed or problems with the medication, and yet she hasn't taken the kids to the doctor. Her refusal also to not be candid and honest with the doctor and give the medical records from the other, from the 
from the St. Rose Pediatrics and the uh, and HBI to uh, to the current doctor that's that's doing the medication. Number three, the, the the refusal to give me information on who the prescribing doctor is because Dr. Accolade, Dr. Cole, the um, the one who wrote the letter was the one who's only monitoring the medication. It's such a severe medication that they have to have a specific doctor that's constantly monitoring it. Now, it's also a last resort medication. So where are all the trials for the previous medication? See, all this stuff is not being adhered to, to the harm of Emmanuel. And because of this, it, 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 I don't trust her as far as I could throw a grand piano much less as far as taking the kids out of state where anything else can happen. She's also fled the state one time trying to wrest jurisdiction from this court to, to California. You done? I am now. Mr. Hall, reviewing the, the uh, text message, does she inform you that there is a parent meeting regarding the school field trip for the fourth and fifth graders? There's a what? A parent meeting regarding the field trip for the fourth and fifth graders. We're not looking at an exhibit right now, are we? We are. Which one? Which one? PLA 0162, proposed exhibit 45. Exhibit 45 is plaintiff's 0161, which I just read, which is correspondence between the parties. That That's would be why 44, you confused me. 45 is text messages between. Mr. Yes, for November 23rd until November 25th of this year. It doesn't reference the field trip. Your Honor, those are emails and those are proposed exhibit 44, 45. No, they're not. Not according to the book you gave me. Proposed 45 is text messages. Tab, instead of doing an actual exhibit book, you tab various pages. But the tab for Plaintiff 161 is a tab that says 45. Proposed plaintiffs are 45 is. Well, it's not the book I have, Council. You're free to verify that I'm telling the truth. This is the book I have. I understand. So you said turn to page 45, and it's an exchange between the parties when the boys are sick. That's it. So then you started asking questions. That's 45, right? Yes. Yeah. 45 is titled as text messages, and it's labeled. It may be, but you stickered page. Okay, so there. it's a document of one, two, three, four. Five, six, four, five. It's a document of four of five pages, which is what you called Exhibit 45. Well, so that's what I look exhibit at. Exhibit 44, 45. Oh, wait. It's pages 161, 162, and 163. Somebody put 45 on the wrong page. 45, as it's on the index, is, is 162 and 163. I understand that, Council. But when I'm looking at it, I don't necessarily refer to the description because, unfortunately, prior to your entry in the case, the descriptions put on these exhibits were particularly editorial. And so you changed that. I appreciate right. it. But what I'm looking at right now is tell me, um, what do you have in your book? Because that's the official one. Okay. Um, the, the 40 Mark 44 starts PLA 056, and then 45 starts PLA 0162. Okay, so my book is mismarked. Okay, now I got to start all over reading it, so right. let's just wait a moment.
Mr. Hall, as part of these text messages, were you informed of a parent meeting regarding the school field trip to the Powell Institute? I might have been, but I refused to allow them to go anywhere. Mr. Hall, would you actually review PLA 0162, the bottom left-hand corner of that text messages, and answer the question that I'm asking, which is, were you informed of a parent meeting? Yes. Did you attend that meeting? No. There was no need to attend. The kids, kids could not leave state without a court order from this court signed by this judge. It's not up to me, it's up to the judge. So your contention is that the parents cannot make a decision regarding the children attending a field trip? Not only school. can the parents not make the decision, but if the decision was left in my hands, the answer would definitely still be no. And the reason being is because of the lack of supervisor, super, supervising capacity of the uh, plaintiff. She has uh, multiple issues of supervisor, super, supervision issues with the children, causing near death multiple times since Israel's death. It would be irresponsible for me to even think to allow her to take the children anywhere else. What are you asking the court to do regarding custody of the children today? I haven't asked. What would you be asking the court regarding I'll plead the custody fifth for now. today? What? I'll plead the fifth for now. You no, can't ask. plead the fifth. There's, this can't. isn't a criminal trial. This is not a criminal trial? Oh, okay. Doggone it. This is not about a criminal activity. Oh, okay. Um, I want the safety and well-being of my sons, as I stated, not only in this case, in the previous case, and in the previous case before that. Um, I am not only concerned about the medication issues, I I'm not only concerned about um, the safety issues, the supervision issues, the him doing a backflip in the pool and hitting his head in the concrete on the way into the pool. The, the kids being left alone for almost 30 minutes at night over at Cowabunga Bay, the, the incessant, um, the kids telling me that, that their mom's beating on them and hitting them, that the, 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 the just, just mom telling DFS in the record that she's not on her medication, refuses to go on it. Uh, Again, I don't, I don't mean to interrupt, but it's a little more directed question. Okay, we're talking about custody of the children today. All I want to know is what you are seeking as far as custody, physical and legal custody of the children today. I have never sought um, to take the kids away from mom. I, in fact, when she took all her money from our apartment, moved into a different apartment and abandoned us, um, I still brought the kids over to her place every day to be with the kids and to be so they can be with their mother. One of the arguments that was used to the to the national media on national TV was the boys just lost their brother. They don't need to lose their mother too. That was the argument I used. Okay. I am not here to take the kids away from their mother. However, if their mother refuses or is incapable, which I believe she is, of supervising the kids properly and taking care of the kids properly, she needs to be on supervised visitation. She needs to have visitation, but she needs to be supervised, especially when she's drugging the kids improperly, especially when there's when when there's multiple near death experiences for the for the children, especially when there's there there's all kinds of things that are just absolutely crazy that are going on with these kids. Kids now are suffering. They had a four, they're in the 46th percentile, and they're at Lewis E. Road, they're now down to the 18th percentile. I talked to their school psychologist. And they're in 100% mom's care when they're at school. So you can't blame anybody else. Okay. Are you sure you have the children on Friday? It what? is. I have them Friday afternoon after school. Okay. And do you assist them with their schoolwork? They don't have schoolwork on Fridays after school. Have you ever refused to assist with projects? I have refused to allow 
uh, things to take the time away from the plans that I have for my sons when I am with them. I make plans well in advance to, with, to be with my sons, to heal them emotionally and in other ways in dealing with the situation that they're dealing with. I dealt with their mother for eight years, so I, I know what being over there is like. Have you ever intentionally withheld them from school? No, never intentionally. Was there recently an incident where... No, no, wait a minute. I take that back. Yes, there was. One time. And when was that? That was... Um, they had a, a psychiatrist, and her name was Jill Waite. And Jill and the kids had just had been in Cats, and they were having a bad time of things in Cats. It was just it was just awful. What Storm and Emmanuel... And they would cry every night. They would cry themselves to sleep over this situation. So I talked to their therapist, Joe Wade. Joe Wade said, you know what? Take a day off, take them back to see their old school and their old teachers and, and see if that assuages the situation. Because they were just cut off. Mom illegally took them out of school and placed them in a different school. So, 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 and it wasn't even addressed by the court. So she violated the court order, took the kids out of school, and they were just absolutely miserable. They even talked to their attorney about it. So um, the attorney wouldn't do anything about it. And so I said, listen, if they're not representing you, you need to fire somebody who's not representing you. That's what I would do. Because they asked me, what, Daddy, what should I do? So anyway, that's how that happened. But what ended up happening was um, I took them over to Lewis E. Rowe. And Storm and Emmanuel and Miss Hobson and Miss Poole cried in each other's arms. And that was the beginning of their healing. Where, where, where they were okay, because they knew, they knew they could go back when they really, really needed to. Now, you have stated that she illegally removed them. Yes. That, that's your testimony, correct? It, it is, because you're not supposed to remove, violate a court order to remove kids anywhere. Right. If you have an issue with something, you can appeal to the court. And if, you, and if it's really serious and really needs to be done fast, you do what we call an order shortening time. None of those things were done. Did you, you in fact moved, didn't you? Uh, yes, but however, when I moved, there is a um, there's a document that you're supposed to sign called a uh, um, it's a what they call a waiver. You you actually sought a zone variance, correct? A zone variance. That's it. Yeah. Zone variance. And in fact, the plaintiff also sought the zone variance, correct? I don't know what the plaintiff did or did not do. But she also signed the document requesting, didn't she? I don't know about that. Okay. I, I'm the zone variance was denied, wasn't it? The do zone variance problem on my side was denied, and it was brought before the principal as well as the school. And by that time, they had already removed the kids, put them in it. When they decided to approve it, they had already put the kids in another school, which was Katz Elementary, <coughs> and the school district said they're not going to move the kids again. Correct. It was the school district who denied them to stay in row under a zone variance, didn't they? Not that I know, from what I understand, it was the principal. And therefore, the children had to be enrolled in CATS, correct? No. So they should have just been withheld from school? No. Um, I believe that they, it should have been, I, because there's an appeal process, I, I believe we should have been through the appeal process. Okay. I was in the middle of the appeal process when the, when the court order was violated. How would you describe the level of conflict between you and Ms. Lofton? Mm, let me see. Blood in my urine for my kidneys, torn rotator cuff, uh, let's see, bruises the size of footballs, um, uh, throwing a Coke bottle in my face, um, snapping Storm's neck back so hard they stopped him from breathing temp temporarily when it was an infant. I'd say pretty high. And all of these things that you've just mentioned, you actually have no evidence whatsoever, do you? Yes, I do. I have tons of evidence. Okay. None of it's been admitted thus far in this case, has it? It has. It's been thrown out by this judge six times. Okay. And let's be clear. You were ordered by the court to have a mental health eval? Correct. And it was recommended by the guardian ad litem? It was recommended. The judge was the one who... I think it might have even been before they had But you didn't do that evaluation, did you? I'm doing the best that I can. I'm an Uber driver, and, and I have some issues, financial issues, due to the fact that my tires have been slashed 27 times, I believe, by the plaintiff or friends of the plaintiff. 
and and so I had to move into a place that finally I moved into a place now that has a garage. But so to be I don't clear, have you have not completed the mental health evaluation. Um, I have gone through a, a mental health assessment, uh, and that has been given to the guardian ad litem. And also, I have um, in fact I have a copy of it here if you need it. The mental health assessment. So you're stating that that the email that was testified regarding er earlier, that that was an evaluation, an early evaluation for a mental health exam. Is that correct? No, this is what they call a mental health assessment. Okay. It, it's on the way to getting a mental health eval. They look at this and they say, okay, what are the major stressors? What are we dealing with? And then they refer you on to the next step. And it's my understanding that that was done by a licensed therapist in Utah. Is that correct? Yes, he's been doing it for 30 years. Right. Good guy. So let me see if I understand this right. You're doing everything you can financially, but you can travel to Utah and have an evaluation done in Utah, but not here. Is that correct? Yes, and let me tell you why that is. Well, I just needed the yes or no. No, we'll no, no. let me that. tell you why Sir, it is. No, you can do that on your point at your time. Okay. You don't view public education in a, in a very good light, do you? Counseling. My mother is a public education school teacher and English teacher. I view it very finely. Okay. This is the problem I have. We're 50th. Out of all 50 states, we're 50th. Mm -hmm. Last year, we're 49th. This year, we're 50th. Mm -hmm. okay. Appalachia is doing better than us. Mr. Hall, since you know the stats so well, how did the state of Nevada do in 2017 in academic performance? It's part of the raw data of that report card. Are you familiar with it? No, I'm not familiar with it. Okay. Are you familiar with the per-student spending and where we rank on that per year? No, I'm not. So the only thing it's fair to say you're familiar with is what made it into the newspaper or onto the Internet. Is that a fair way of putting it? No, it's not a fair way of putting it. Okay. How many schools in, the, in Clark County School District are U.S. News and World Report top 100 public high schools? I don't know. My kids aren't in high school. Okay. How many of them are high-achieving, nationally-ranked uh, elementary schools in Clark County School District? Let me tell you something. It's a simple question. Why are question. you whispering, sir? I, I don't mean to whisper. I'm sorry. You just did. I'm sorry. That means I don't hear it. Oh, so I'm sorry. I don't know what you're saying. Let Counselor, me... let me explain something to you. There is one school that I am the big thumbs up on, and that's Lewis E. Rowe. They brought my kid from knowing 14 letters to being at a 50 percentile. That was Emmanuel. Lewis E. Rowe, I, I, I know. I looked the principal in his eyes. Talk to the school psychologists. Talk to those teachers. The kids, I love those teachers, and, and, and I love them too. I can't speak to the rest of the district or the rest of what the clown situation is with the school system here, but I will say this. Louis E. Rowe and that principal, who, by the way, is gay, is an awesome principal. He's the best guy I've ever seen and ever known. I've never seen a man care about his kids more than him, ever. I love that man. Was Emmanuel in it, Ro? Kindergarten. And what in grade first was grade. Stormy? Second grade. Okay. How long did they attend there? About a year. Okay. And how long have they been at CATS? About almost a year and a half, two years, I think. Right. Did Storm just make the AB honor roll? He did, but he bounced really hard at first. He's been struggling. Emmanuel is now in the 18 percentile out of when he used to be 46 in Lewis E. Rowe. And you base that on what? On the report from the school psychologist. Uh, his name is... Sir, do you have the report? No, I don't have the report. I subpoenaed it. It did not, uh, it did not come. Evidently, I got a letter from uh, Lewis E. Rowe saying they refused to give me the, the records of my own kid. Why do you find that humorous, Council? Oh, I forgot your answer to the question. I had a meeting with the school psychologist, and he was the one who told me that the kids are, are in the 18 percentile. The Emmanuel's in the 18 percentile. Do Storm and Emmanuel have any siblings? Um, yes. And where are they located? They're located in California. They were given to their dad. Vanessa's father testified against her. 
in the court and and Jackson the, the father strike. the father got testimony got custody of the kids all five your honor i would ask that the witness be directed to reach to keep his answers to the question you had sir i'm going to ask you again and this is going to please forgive me your honor i'm trying to answer as completely as i can doing it if there's something you want me to tell want to tell me after mr Grimes has asked you questions, and I've asked you questions. I will give you time to do so. You bet you will. But the various editorializing and arguing with Mr. Grimes is not productive. Yes, Your Honor. Sorry about that, Your Honor. Do you permit so the only thing I've written down is that the children have siblings in California. The rest of it I have no evidence supporting. Mr. Hall, do you permit the, the children to see their older siblings? What do you mean, do I permit? Do you permit the children to have a relationship with their older siblings? They've never been with their older siblings. Storm has been with them maybe once. I think Emmanuel's seen them once. They don't have a current relationship with the other kids. The other kids are in California with their father. And you actually have stated numerous times that you will not allow them near those children, correct? Correct. Um, Here's one of the reasons why they have been raised. Sir, you weren't asked why. Okay, you betcha. Sorry. Taken the children and left the state and hidden the children in violation of a court order? No. Never. In 2011, did you take the, ch the two children and go to, to Texas? Wait a minute. Let's backtrack here. 2011? Yeah. What court order? They actually. Yeah, it was a 2009. Yes, I had full legal and full physical custody of Storm. There was no order on Emmanuel. And did you take the children and leave the state of Nevada and relocate to the state of Texas? I did for three months. I did not take them and violate a court order to do so. I had full legal and full physical custody of Storm. I have the video of the judge that, that, that authorized it. And in fact, the order said that either parent had to have permission of the court or the other parent to what are you talking the about, state, counsel? No, I didn't no it did not say that. 2011. No. What judge? No, it was not with her. 2009. It, it really, no conversation between the two of you, okay? You're confusing me, Mr. Graham. I'm not trying to confuse you. you. I'm trying to get to whether or not he has previously committed an act of parental abduction in violation of the law. I understand that. But please. Let's put it in context again. When I get stuff out of context, I get confused. I don't think you want the judge who's deciding these issues to be confused. No, I don't want you to So when you're about talking about an event that was seven years ago or more, and I haven't had this case for seven years, and I have no idea what judge we're talking about, and as far as Judge Sullivan, he didn't get on the case till about 2015 or 2016. So I don't know who, who, what judge or where or what litigation. And, Your Honor, because I was not counsel in that, it was a sealed case, but I think he has just admitted that he, uh, they had entered into an agreement in a previous case where he had, um, physical, he had cu custody of Storm. I had full legal and full physical custody of Storm and did not violate any court order to take him out of state. I didn't need permission to take him anywhere. I could take him to the moon. Okay. So your testimony today is that you did, in fact, take Storm and Emmanuel to Texas, correct? Yes, for their safety. Okay. Mom, was, mom had done things that would, that would cause serious injury to the children. Okay. And, and so I took them for their safety. Right. And you lied to the plaintiff about where you were, correct? I don't remember lying to the plaintiff about where I was. Did you tell her you were in Dallas, Texas? I didn't tell. I don't think I told her at all where I was. Okay. 
I did not want her coming because she was very psycho. When she's pregnant, she has very mental issues. Let's raise that one as well. In fact, she was pregnant with Israel at that point, wasn't she? Uh, she was. So you left your pregnant girlfriend at that time with and absconded with the two children to Texas. Does that put everything in the correct context? No, what it means is that she was doing things that would put harm to Storm and Emmanuel. She walked them in sub-zero, sub-freezing temperatures, seven miles to her friend's house. Her friend even cussed her out when she had done this. Her friend's name was Ann Bart, uh, Bartol, Bartorelli, I believe. And, and, and they had the green 11 running out of their nose. They were sick. To be clear, that was here in Las Vegas, correct? Yes. And uh, so we had sub-zero weather in Las Vegas. In the winter, yes. Yeah. And, and sub-freezing, not sub-zero. Sub-freezing is what I meant to say. Sub-zero concerning Celsius, but not Fahrenheit. You mean like this week? Yeah, I believe it's like right down today. I mean, I'm Don't sure you're not going to try to persuade me. Is that Las Vegas is a tropical climate. I have a responsibility for the protection. Sir, there's no question. Oh, sorry, Sunday. sorry, 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 I forgot, I forgot. All right. So, and you left the plaintiff in Las Vegas pregnant, correct? Here's the problem. Sir, so it's a yes or no yes question. Or no. Yes, she was pregnant when I left to take care of the kids to make sure they were safe, yes because she was doing things to harm the children. Okay. <clears throat> Let's be clear. When did you marry Vanessa? I married her at the behest of my bishop at church um, to get my life right spiritually. I married her, it was, the, 14, it was uh, the 15th of April. I believe it was 2014 or 15. So this woman that you feared so much committed these atrocities to you, you subsequently married, correct? Yes. And the reason that I did was to be right with the church, number one, and number two, because she would try to do something to take the kids and harm the kids. I've been to this court, back and forth to this court many times, trying to get full custody of these kids. Okay. So let's talk about another issue that came up not that long. Was there a time where you agreed to exchange the children here at this courthouse? I agreed to, to drop, yes, to, to exchange the children here at this courthouse, yes. Okay. Just and to bring them here to get the kids. That was after the plaintiff Mr. kept Hall, my kids for a month. There, you know the event I'm talking about. You agreed to exchange the children here, correct? That's after keeping my kids for a month, yes. Okay. I, I, was I there agreed. subsequently a disagreement regarding exchanging the children on Sunday where the children were not exchanged? No. I, I chose to go by the I told to go by the court order. Sir, was there a disagreement in the the plaintiff came here and you went to Katz Elementary? There, if there was a disagreement, it was with the plaintiff. It was not with me. I I'm making no order. judgment. I'm simply saying, was there a subsequent disagreement that led to the children not being exchanged on Sunday? No. What? Uh, what? Uh, there was on her part, not on mine. Okay. I followed the court order. Fine. The children were not exchanged on Sunday, correct? Correct. Did she, you take them to school on Monday? Yes, I did. What time? I was a little bit late for school, probably about 9 o'clock. Had a big line in my In arm. fact, you took them to the VA hospital with you, didn't you? At 5 o'clock that morning, I had an emergency with a pick line in my arm. Okay. And, of course, you contacted the plaintiff regarding all of this? Uh, plaintiff contacted me. Repeatedly, but you didn't respond. But that's not the point. Well, Did I you had an emergency. I was Mr. in the emergency Grimes, room. Are you testifying? Yeah, I was a little. I apologize. I, 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 I was in the emergency room. Did you contact the plaintiff and say, I'm in the emergency room, please come get the children? No, I contacted her and told her I'm in the emergency room and that I'll be bringing the children to school, which I did. And you were admitted? No, I was in the emergency room. I had a problem with the pick line. The pick line goes from your arm to your heart, and you can't have any issues with it. Mine was coming apart. And I was there at 5 o'clock in the morning, about 4.30 actually, in the morning, at the VA hospital. How'd you get there? I drove. 
So you got your children out of bed at 4.30 in the morning to go to the hospital, correct? Yes, to drive to the hospital. Okay. And rather than taking the children to their mother, you took them to the ER with you? Yes. Okay. And you felt that was a good, sound decision for the children? Absolutely. Okay. Anytime they're not with their mom, they're not in harm's way. you a few questions and then you can you bet you see what else you want to tell me. Um, you have, over time, accused the plaintiff of slashing your tires. Sometimes it's 10 times, sometimes it's 14 times, and sometimes it's 17 times. I've read through the record and I've seen different allegations, and you've made these allegations both in writing and in open court. Now my question to you is, what evidence do you have that the plaintiff or someone acting at her behalf has slashed your tires? I, the evidence that, that... I ask what evidence you have. Okay, here's the deal. My tires only get slashed within, within, within three days to one week after she gets my address here in Open Court. So let me see if I understand. So, so, so to me... When was the last time your tires were slashed by someone? They were slashed um, before I moved into the new place that I'm at right now. You mean the one that I don't have the address for? Yes, you do, Your Honor. It's in court record. And I give it to the guardian of my... some Tropicana? No, no, the, the one on uh, TP Lane. No, don't have that one. Yes, you do. It's in court record, Your Honor. I'll what? see if I can find it. It's filed as well. Because I don't have it. Okay, okay? I'll, I'll look at it. Everything you have filed up to this point has to be at a Tropicana address. Okay, I'll, I'll see if I can find it. The, the, okay, um, that's I, part one. I've given a copy okay. also to so the... Uh, my question to you To is, the attorney here? Other than what might be a coincidence, what, and, and frankly... Um, there have only been a few address issues here, but what evidence do you have that the plaintiff or someone acting at her behest has slashed any of your tires? Once again, it only happens within three to seven days after the plaintiff gets my address. How many times? I've had 27 tires slashed. Over. Now it's 27? Yes, Your Honor. Every time. When was the last time? The last time was when I was over at, um, over at, um, the Siegel Suites where I, where I lived. Off and of when Graphic was that? Give me, a day, give me a month and a year. Probably, maybe about three months ago, two months three ago. Three months ago you were at Siegel Suites, but didn't disclose that address to the court. I disclosed that address not only to the guardian ad litem, to the court, and to the uh, and I filed it with the court. Okay, now. And, and the plaintiff even served me. Okay. They're claiming she now didn't have the address, but she you served me there. Is if you didn't disclose it to me, and you didn't disclose it to the plaintiff, and apparently didn't disclose it to Mr. Grimes, and the only person who might have had access to that information was the guardian ad litem. How do you connect that to the plaintiff? It, here's the deal, Your Honor. Um, the tires only start getting slashed when the plaintiff knows where I live. When I'm, Except when I'm, she didn't know where you lived. That's why I'm confused. She did know where I live because, and the reason she did, she served me there, Your Honor. She claimed in court that she didn't know where I lived. Okay. She lied in court. But she actually served me at the location. But you've never seen her slash your tires. I've never seen her slash my tires. You've never, I've, seen, I've never seen anyone, anyone that, she, that slash you my believe tires. she knows slash your tires. I've never seen anyone, but i got a stack of tires in my... Okay, in my, you've, in never, my you've never witnessed your tires getting slashed. Is no, that Your correct? Honor, I have not seen it. So you don't know. It could be anybody. Once again, it only happens within three to seven days after the plaintiff receives my address. And it's happened 27 times now? Yes, Your Honor. 
I'm an Uber driver. Now I'm going to have to pay for the tires, but I can't drive when my car is down. I understand what it you're saying. It makes it really I hard to get the money together to be and able to do a psyche valve. I'm having trouble making the connection to the planet. I'm like you. Okay. Now, you have accused the plaintiff of committing acts of domestic violence, physical domestic violence against you. Yes, Your Honor. What evidence do you have of that? Um, I have pictures, photographs. I have police reports. I have... Um, Ever applied for a TPO? Yes, I was denied. Yeah, okay, so this is just coming from you. So if the plaintiff denies all of this, which that's a fair guess, she denies all of these allegations, then how do you expect me to conclude that they must be true? Well, I don't expect you, I, I expect you to go by the corroborating evidence from law enforcement, DFS. But the problem is that there is no record. There is other a record. Other than allegations. There is no evidence is what I'm asking you. There is evidence. There are so. allegations but there is no corroborative evidence, is my point. That's that's a false statement. There is corroborating evidence. Okay, well, we'll see where this goes, but so far I have none. Okay. Um, do the boys love their mother? I think they do. Okay. And they want to spend time with her? Yes, I believe they do. And... Do you believe that there is any way you and the plaintiff can find a way to at least peacefully coexist? I believe there is, but I'm not sure if the plaintiff is willing to take those actions. Well, that, that puzzles me because you've come to my court and you've repeatedly stated that she's withheld the children. She has. And she, her response is, but he was over last week. So you've been given access to the children, but you're accusing her of withholding the children, and that confuses the court. Your Honor, not only do I have police reports, not only and do I have um, um, civil you, standbys that have come by with their paperwork. Have you ever gone to the plaintiff's house? Yes, Your Honor. And yeah, let me finish the question. And been refused access to the children Ever. Your Honor, yes. That's a when? Um, um, one time she was just talking about, uh, they were just talking about it in court. I went to her house and she still wouldn't let me have the children. It was, it was. Was it during your time or hers? It was during my time. Okay. And when There's was a that? month that, that the children were taken. When from. was that? It was the last hearing that we had. We had a big hearing about it. It was a month. I didn't have the kids for an entire month. He was saying that um, her attorney was basically saying that it was the wrong time. Then he said it was the wrong location. This was the 3 o'clock at the Again, school and sir, all that. Just please understand the question I'm asking you. Because you have accused the plaintiff of withholding her children. And the plaintiff and her attorney have both represented that that is not true. And in fact, if you insisted on taking your time share, you'd have your time share. And that you have actually gone to the plaintiff's home without incident and spent time with the children, correct? I spent probably uh, maybe 10 minutes or 15 minutes with the children in total. And I had, um, I had witnesses there with me to make sure that domestic violence would where not Where are they? Occur. I had witnesses with me. Yeah, no, where are they? I, I, well... They're not here in the courtroom. No, they're an empty chair. So, <coughs> as I understand it, uh, let me see if I understand this. When the children are with their mother, do they get fed? Sometimes. A lot of times. When do they not get fed? And how they do you tell know me that they make their own food all the time. How do you know if you're not seeing the children consistently? I know my children. Here's my question, I, and I, it, it's a biblical saying, so maybe you'll appreciate it. One of my favorite sayings is you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Really what that saying? It's not a biblical saying, Your Honor. 
Yeah, it is. Because I think this explained that. Maybe it's not biblical, because I've always thought it was. I don't know, maybe not horses. Anyway, if you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Okay? What I mean by that is it disturbs me very greatly as a judge who's here trying to protect kids that when I give a parent a timeshare, they don't exercise it. And that hurts kids. So my question to you, sir, is have you always consistently taken the timeshare that you were ordered to be given? Yes, Your Honor, unless I was in the hospital. Unless there was a, unless there was a reason that I could not take the kids, then and if, if I'm in the hospital... But you said you hadn't seen the kids for a month. Yes, Your Honor. Was that while you were in the hospital? No. Okay. So you could have exercised your timeshare, but did not. No, she did not show up with the kids at the location. Well, and which location? Because the apparently there's confusion about locations. The, the, the police told me that I had to come see you in order to get, which I did. I filed, I filed a, a thing, and that's what we were in court last time for. I understand that, but when it was all said and done, she doesn't meet you. Let's assume that there's an exchange location. She doesn't meet you. You go to her house and get the kids. Your Honor, I've gone to her house. She's not there. I've gone there with civil standby. She's not there. Where's all the records of the civil standbys? Oh, my goodness. I have brought them and brought them to you a multiplicity and of And when time. you've gone to that, was it over a weekend? Or was it during the week? It was both. Well, you it was know, over the, week over the weekend. I was supposed here. to pick them up on Friday. And, um, and, um, let's see if I can find them. What exchange location did I order? You ordered, uh, uh Katz Elementary School is what okay, you ordered so previously. This is following me through on this. I'm trying to be very logical. So you have the ability to pick up the kids from Katz Elementary. Yes. And then have them for the weekend, correct? Yes. Okay. Why are you going with Katz to her house? I go first to Katz Elementary, and when she doesn't show up there, then I go with cops to her house. Well, she doesn't have to show up for the for you to take the kids. You're independently able to take those children out of Katz. So I'm puzzled by... Your Honor, the time that you, that was stated was 3 o'clock was the exchange time. Right. I'm supposed to be at Katz at 3. The kids I, get out... object that is, in, in fact, what the order said, and that the court's already addressed that. He's now state, misstating the evidence. The order said to pick up the children at release of school. He refused, was not getting there until 3. My client was picking them up at the release of school. Uh, the kids don't six. get out of school till 3. No, they were out of school at 2.12, right? 2.06. Two two okay. And he wanted them to just sit there for an hour. That, no, Your Honor, that is a straight-up lie. The, uh, the, 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 the court order was very clear. It said I'm supposed to pick up the kids at 3 o'clock after they get out of school. I think it was when school lets out. And if, in fact, because the old school district used to have kids let out of school at 310 or 12 or whatever it was, I said 3 because I assumed that was the time that school lets out. But, sir, knowing, sir, sir, knowing that you are going to be able to pick up the kids when school lets out, why aren't you there at 2? Your Honor, number one, there's a precedent that's already been set. We've been picking up the kids at 3 o'clock from, from previous times, from previous time to previous time, before all but this it, happened. it doesn't work to the children's best interest. The children expect to get out of school, and there's a parent there waiting for them. Your Honor, I, I, I understand that. That's why I disagreed with it when it was being done. No, that's not why you disagreed with it. You didn't like the entirety of the timeshare, period. Well, I didn't like the timeshare at all. Offered I ordered that you would have a certain timeshare, and the question I have is, why then would you leave the children on the school grounds and not pick them up when they're out of school? I didn't leave them on the school grounds, Your Honor. This is the, this is the, the fallacy behind that argument. I followed well, the court order. The court order stated that I'm supposed to pick up the kids at 3 o'clock at Katz Elementary. What's the date of the court order? Elementary. Mr. Grimes, help me out here. What's the date of the court order? It's March 2018 order. March of what? 
March 2018. I'm gonna, we're going to see if we have a copy of it with a date on it. To make it easier. March 28. Here it is. I have it right here. The order is, uh, the date is electronically filed 6-12-2018. So it's your understanding that from time school it's out till 3 p.m. that the children are going to be with their mother? That's what the order said. I was only going by the order. Well, let me. And, and not only that, Your Honor, but I even asked the plaintiff and her attorney, Mr. Grimes, then what is the interp your interpretation order? And they refused to give it to me just to hold the kids, just to hold the kids away from me. They refused to tell me. I'm like, so where are the kids going to be? What time are the kids going to be there? Where are they going to be? And they refused to give me that information just to withhold the children from me. It was just, it's, it's maddening. You'll rarely find a father that loves his children like I love mine and cherishes every moment that he spends with them. Okay. It appears that nobody tells the court that the school lets out earlier than it used to, or that would have not been a confusion. But I ask you, sir, once you realized that this was potentially a problem, did you endeavor to contact the plaintiff and confirm that you can pick up the kids when school lets out, even though it's earlier than 3 o'clock. Did you ever ask her that? Yes, Your Honor. Not when? Only, Your Honor, not only did, uh, did I ask, I don't remember, Your Honor, but, but we've had that conversation a multiplicity of times. Where are the kids? Where are the kids? Even when, they, even when the kids were being dropped off, an hour before they were being dropped off at okay. Cats. Sir, I am extremely linear, and I don't go to a new subject until I get done with the one I'm on. Okay. So my question to you is, if in fact the court was under a misunderstanding as to the time that school lets out, and in fact you should have been picking up the kids around 2.15, did you ever endeavor to clarify that with either the plaintiff or her attorney? I clarified it with both, Your Honor, in email and in, in, email and in text. Do you have any emails that reflect that? Yes, I can pull them up on my computer. Mr. Grimes, did you ever receive an email from the plaint from the defendant asking to clarify the pickup? Yes. I need to be careful. Am I being asked to testify at this point? No, I'm not asking. I'm, yeah, I suppose I, I, I am. Yeah. I, so that's Your Honor, I will stipulate that there was, in fact, communication regarding this issue. That, this, uh, that it was laid out clearly at the last motion hearing as to what it was. You know what? 
March was a long time ago, and this is what I find concerning. March was a long time ago. Why now, nine months later, am I first hearing that that order was based on a misapprehension and needed clarification? And that's directed at all the parties, frankly. You did not ask me for a clarification. You did not. No, no. I, I'm, uh, I'm about to defend him. Well, that's not his fault. And, and, and I want to be clear. There's I a believe reason. he's misrepresenting representing the communications. And Don't make yourself a witness. I'm correct. a little frustrated right and now because if I had known that school lets out at CATS at 2.15, that would have been the time. So follow me through on this. So you would get to the school every time you had a weekend with the kids at 3 o'clock. And where were the kids? The kids were not there. They weren't at Katz Elementary. Okay. Did you ever determine after that where they were? I would ask mom by text where they were. She refused to tell me. I would go to her house. They would not be at her house. Okay. Fair enough. That's my, that was my question. Your Honor, can I do some more no, questions? No, I'm not done. But I'm not done. Okay. You can, you can get redirect. I don't want to lose the topic. Do you believe that it would be in Emmanuel's best interest to have a neutral doctor who's never met Emmanuel before, but understands things like ADHD and those kinds of issues? Would you want Emmanuel evaluated by somebody neutral? He has been evaluated by someone neutral, Your Honor. Let me finish this column and take both parties system. agreed on this individual. A new parts person. Would you agree to that? Rather than you being a doctor. Your Honor, I'm not a doctor, and, and I, I don't have any. That. So I don't have any problems is, with doctors. Would you agree to a neutral, independent evaluator determining whether either boy needs medication? Sure, Your Honor. Okay. Now, and this is coming <coughs> from, by the way, my own concerns about medicating kids. Okay. So. Um, if, however, this person, who isn't somebody wedded to the idea of pharmaceuticals, okay, and believes maybe that you can treat a child with behavior modification, if that person nonetheless recommended that either boy be administered certain medication to allow them to focus and to behave themselves, would you accept that diagnosis? Your Honor. It's um, a yes or no, please. Can I defer this for later? Because I have evidence that, 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 that talks about this. What's later? It's 2.30. Well, well, when I get a chance to get on the stand and, 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 and call the plaintiff to the stand. Well, the way it's going to work, quite frankly, is now's the time when you're going to be talking to me. The next witness I'm guessing Mr. Grimes will be calling is his client. When Mr. Grimes is done, you'll have an opportunity to cross-examine the plaintiff. Can, can we, can, can I reserve that question to be answered later? Um, I don't know why, but I suppose so. If Your I Honor, could, I'd, I'd like to do briefly, that. Now. Only because I, I believe in trying to save time. I'm willing to waive scope at this time so that he can also introduce his case in chief if it is helpful to him providing Fair evidence enough. at this time. Tell me what you want to tell me. Now is your opportunity. <sighs> Thank you, Your Honor. Um, there, there was a time when Emmanuel was doing extremely well in school. He, he, he went from knowing 11 letters only in capital form, to, to being caught up within a year, to being caught up to the 50 percentile and able to read at Lewis E. Rowe. He was not on any medication at that time. He was on a diet. He, he has a very serious allergy to sugar. 
He has a very serious allergy to cow's milk. He has a very serious allergy as well, that, 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 and that seems to increase ADHD. These things were informed, this diet was informed to me by Joe Waite from Human Behavioral Institute. And once we got him on that diet, everything turned around for him. It was when he got back in the auspices of his mother that they were telling me they were giving him cheese and all kinds of other stuff and chocolate and soda, and that's when things started to go downhill. I even have a letter from his teacher, uh, from Emmanuel's, from Storm's teacher, or Emmanuel's teacher, uh, talking about how they are, they went downhill really fast. They're not doing their assignments. What's going on? And um, and and I responded to the uh, to the teacher. Susan Have you provided Poole. all this to Mr. Grimes? Yes, the plaintiff got this long before Mr. Grimes took the case. Says hello, Miss Poole. I'm Sorry, you can't read a letter from it yet. This is a letter from Miss Poole on her email letterhead. I understand. It's still hearsay. Okay. It oh. is hearsay. Anyway, you she can tell me what you concluded. After reading the letter. What I concluded in the letter was that um, Storm was having a problem with lack of participation in the class, so was Emmanuel, um, and, uh, and I informed her that I no longer have custody of the children on Tuesday through Thursday of each week. So um, let me ask you this question. If I order you and the plaintiff to agree on the children's diet, would that resolve some of the conflict? It, it might, Your Honor, but the problem is is that the plaintiff just doesn't give a rip. She's told me in emails and in text messages, which I have, that says that she's not going to put him on a diet and she's not going to modify his diet and she doesn't give a damn. Where are those text messages and emails? Um, I'll go get them in my computer. Here. Well, no, I want the, piece, I want the pieces of paper. Is it in your exhibit book? It's not in my exhibit book, I don't think. Well, then why are you telling me about it? Uh, you I, can't I, show me something you, that you have Because you, you, you asked me a specific question. Yeah, and I asked the children. you. I'm trying to elaborate and give you an answer. I asked you if the, you and the plaintiff agreed on a diet, maybe even met with a pediatrician um, to put them on a diet the, the that doesn't look. These allergies to food are real. If, in fact, either child is diagnosed with some sensitivity to a particular food or substance, can you and the plaintiff agree to avoid those substances in their diets? Would the that resolve some of your conflict? Partially. I believe it is my opinion and only I opinion, and I understand that it's my opinion, that the plaintiff is trying to avoid being responsible for the educational neglect that the children I'm have. I'm not on education. Are, are, are Remember, I told you I was linear. So, 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 let's so start I believe with that, she's, that the reason issues. that she's avoiding the diet is to try to blame the child for the problems no, and no, not no, her. But let, just follow me through. You and the plaintiff go sit down with the pediatrician who maybe does some blood testing on the boys, okay? Because you know what? Milk, not so good. Sugar, real sensitive to sugar. Take sugar out of the diet, or maybe sugar that comes with some fruits that isn't as intense as fructose. And all those things, and you and the plaintiff agreed to follow the physician's recommendations on a diet would that resolve certain conflicts? Your Honor, I've already done that. We have already had physicians and Joe Wade at HBI, which is the children's therapist, to recommend the diet. You're not listening the plaintiff to me, has sir. refused. You're not answering my question. You're answering the question you don't want, you want to answer. But I'm asking my question because I have to make decisions. Okay, I'm sorry. So, if in fact a medical professional, not a therapist, says the boys have sensitivity to these particular substances and it's based in part on blood testing reports that you give the physician as to the reaction to certain things and you can bring in what the human behavioral institute says and they put the children on a particular diet and you and the plaintiff commit to following that diet and in fact it may resolve some of these issues okay is would that resolve conflict
to give myself chocolate. some of it. There's sometimes when I allow them to have sugar, like on their birthday, uh, if, it's, no, if it's a birthday, no, no. if it's their birthday You can't cake or do that, like that, you see, sir. If, in fact, either of your children reacts poorly to sugar, and you're going to, and I appreciate Halloween, that's kind of difficult, but if, in fact, um, Storm or Emmanuel have a sensitivity to sugar, and there are children that do, and it can either create or exacerbate um, attention deficit behavior. My question to you is, why would you then turn around, accuse the plaintiff of not following a diet, but then you're not either? Your Honor, I follow it when they go to school. I make sure that they're on the proper diet so they can well, pay attention. Well, but then you give them a little sugar here and there, and maybe a manual sense of the sugar, and it makes year. them hyper, and all that kind of stuff. And that's what the school sees, that's what the plaintiff sees, because you just got a boatload of sugar in them. There's such a thing as a sugar rush. So my question to you is, can you commit to eliminated conflict can, by having an agreed upon diet for these boys that you both stick to. You're right. not going to be able to control it all the time because they're going to get around their buddies and the buddies will give them candy. But to the extent that you're able to control it, Anything why can't you reach an agreement? Any, I, I agree with you. Anything to me is better than drugs. Anything is better than drugs, Your Honor. Okay, sir. But you need to have the information. And that is a physiological, medical piece of an evaluation. It doesn't come purely from a psychological evaluation. You know, when a child is, is diagnosed, for example, with ADHD, and there's been no attention to their physiology and the diet and what they're intaking, you wonder about the diagnosis. I get that part. But that's not the realm of a psychologist. Psychologist attempts to address behavioral issues, but they don't send the kid for blood testing. They don't, they don't take in anecdotal information about the cause and effect of a certain substance, whether a child's going to have terrible stomach aches from having a piece of cheese. They don't take that into account because they don't do that. Your Honor, I, I, I am. Um I do have the text messages here that show uh, my uh, trying to get the plaintiff to adhere to this diet and schedule. And her That's different. To do so. That's you dictating to the plaintiff how she operates her household, which is very different from you two agreeing on a particular diet for a child based on a medical recommendation. That's imposing your will. I'm not suggesting that you impose your will on the plaintiff. I'm suggesting that you get some medical knowledge, a recommendation that says these are the things that should be avoided in their diet. They may have behavioral consequences. Your Honor, when the kids were at my house, when they were at Lewis C. Rowe, they were doing fantastic. They were doing great. They were catching up. Now they're going downhill and going downhill fast. I, I don't think, I, you, I don't know if you, it's you just... You don't want to hear what I'm saying, I don't think. I hear and that's what you're the saying, though. You don't listen to what I'm saying and try to address... I'm a fan of co-parenting. I'm a fan of parents who may not like each other, but figuring out a way to coexist for the benefit of their kids. I don't think parents realize just how painful it is for a child when his parents are not kind to each other, when they don't respect each other, and they're willing to assume the worst about each other. That is very painful for a child. My job is to endeavor to keep them from that pain. So when I'm trying to explain to you what might help these boys more than anything else, if you don't listen to me, there's nothing I can do other than make decisions about how much time they spend with each parent and hope against hope that they'll do okay in spite of their parents. But, you know, I, there's just so much I can do. Like I said, Your Honor, I, I, I would agree to the diet, like I said earlier. 
Okay, but it would be something not necessarily imposed by you, but recommended by a medical professional. I just want something that works for my baby boy. Excuse me? I just want something that works well for my baby boy. I just love my son. And I just Sir, want something that works. You need to speak up so that the, the oh. record will record. Oh, sorry about that. Is this don't better? Don't get right up on the microphone. Oh, just don't. speak in a normal voice. I just want something that's going to work for my baby boy. Your baby boy? Which is your baby boy? Emmanuel's my youngest now. Okay, I get it. Okay, I wasn't sure who you were talking about. I wanted to be sure. Nobody, I don't, you know, guess what? We're on the same page on that. Yeah. But again, it isn't a my way, the highway type of approach. Um, that isn't working for you and the plaintiff. Well, it's Any not. more than her imposing her will on you doesn't work either. Your Honor, it's not working for Emmanuel. That's the only person I really care about. And the truth of the matter <coughs> is, is that, um, like I said, he's he's down in the 18th percentile, and he's at the point in his schooling where it's going to be unrecoverable if we don't turn this around. But you can't do it independently of each other. Don't you understand that? I think it's in the best interest of the child to be with a parent that's working, that, that, is, that is working well with. Not with a okay. parent that is not working. Okay. Well is there it. anything else you want to tell me? No. I mean, there is, but. Well, no. Then now's your chance. Um. I went to Dr. Colas's office to meet with him, uh, to meet with his staff concerning the medication that he's on. They gave me a piece of paper. This is the actual paper I received from him on the medication. Have you shown that to the scribes? And before I look at it, do you have any objection to me looking at it? I'm going to object to relevance and the fact that it hasn't been turned over. It's going to require that he gives expert testimony, and I'm, so I'm going to object. And I'm going to sustain that objection. Okay. I would need an expert here to tell me what that means. Okay. Um, well, then I'll just kind of try to do it in layman's terms, best I can know how. You can tell me what you think it means, but you can't okay. tell me I what it means. I can tell you what it means. Perfect. Um, I was reading on here. No, you can't read from it. You can't read You can from only it. tell me what you've concluded after reading I've it. I've concluded that... This medication is never supposed to be broken or split in half. The plaintiff texted me and told me that the medication was too strong, that Emmanuel was falling asleep in class, and that she needed to split the pill in half, that she got permission from the doctor to split that pill in half. This pill, from what I understand, is never to be split in half because it releases all 24 hours of the medication immediately at one time. It could literally kill the child. I'm going to object. He's presenting expert testimony. Yeah, we can't okay. do that. Sorry about that. Um, that that you're never supposed to split the, split the child. That no, sir, you can't. I can't say that it. either. Okay. Um, um, also, it said you know he warned me. His his staff member warned me of things to look out for with this medication. What's what to watch out for? And one of those things was uh, uh, fatigue and sleepiness, which is what she was saying was happening with Emmanuel in class. Another one was irritability, which is another thing that he was complaining of in class. Uh, um, it, it, how he was having nightmares, which he was telling me. Another thing that was triggered by this medication. Almost all the things that I was told <laughs> to watch out for from this therapist were the things that this child was exhibiting. Do does Emmanuel have what's called an IEP at school? Ma'am, you're not, you can't tell him what to say. To the best of your knowledge, sir, does Emmanuel have an IEP? Not that I know of. I it's have, called an individual education. Yes, I'm course. aware of it. Your Honor, I have. Okay, I just asked this question. Is storm on any medications to your knowledge? Not to my knowledge. Okay. Maybe Benadryl. Maybe. 
do both children have allergies? Emmanuel has allergies to dogs and, uh, and to any animals that have hair or fur. He's been taken to the hospital twice behind it. Does Storm have any allergies? No, not that I'm aware of. Has it ever been recommended that Emmanuel get allergy shots? Um, not that I am aware of. Typically kids grow out of those things. I had allergies when I was too very young and I grew out of them. Lucky you. Um, have you met with Emmanuel's allergist? I have met. I have met with Emmanuel's primary care physician. Okay, he doesn't have an allergist. To the best of your knowledge. No. Okay. I have not met with an allergist okay. when it came to him. Has Emmanuel been prescribed any medications for these allergies? I would defer that to the plaintiff. You don't know. Okay. Fair enough. My, my way of dealing with his allergies is just don't put him around horses and dogs and things that cause his eyes to swell up like saucers. I just don't do that to my kid. I think that's torturing hard, the kid. So. Does, does Emmanuel have friends at school? Yes, he does. Okay. Um, how do you ensure that when he's playing with his friends that he's not exposed to these? Which is why I'm asking all these questions. Um, I've had him over at Lewis E. Rowe, and he never had a problem when he was at Lewis E. Rowe, and he had lots of friends over there. But I'm asking you, now that he's showing signs of allergy, how are you protecting him from dogs at his buddy's homes? Um... I can't, when the plaintiff takes him over intentionally to animals and 4-H and everything else, I, I can't do that. Is that your testimony that the plaintiff has been taking his children to 4-H? Yes, of course. Okay. In fact, twice from 4-H, directly from 4-H, they were sent to the emergency room because okay. he was having trouble breathing. He could not breathe. Okay. And one time she just left without even having him seen. She said the wait was too long. Anything else you want to tell me? There's a ton of stuff I want to tell you. Now's the time, sir. Okay, so. Your Honor, it's 3 o'clock. Can we take a five-minute break? Sure. And that'll give you time to gather your thoughts. 